by 1990, no Australian child will be living in poverty. Wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. So, what is Smart Cities? Well, it's an umbrella term for the high tech programs with features like the ability to check for vacant car parks or public barbecues. A broad range of technologies is being rolled out by local councils across Australia. One Adelaide Council even hopes to use motion sensors to help elderly people cross the road and sensors to alert the council when waste bins are full. Smart Cities technology also includes security camera networks. And here's the problem. Some residents fear councils will introduce facial recognition technology as part of that. Researchers believe it's the fear of the unknown. Many of people, uh, they are worried about the privacy or uh, they don't even know a smart city is. A UniSA survey found 45% of respondents said they'd never heard of the term smart cities. 54% didn't understand the concept. Police understand the technology and how it can be useful. There are some cities in the world where um, they do have these, uh, the facial recognition technology as a part of their CT, CCT network and it certainly contributes to preventing crime and, and solving crime. And the bottom line is, councils will adopt these smart city technologies as they become available and affordable. Welcome to Truth Core. Praise Jesus. Where we live in changing times. Challenging times. Times where the way people live is changing. The way people may be making a living soon is changing. We have been forced by the social engineers and the powers that be to reevaluate the way we do things. The way we interact with one another has changed. The way people raise their children has changed. The way people go about their daily lives has changed and is changing and will continue to change. New technologies, new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things. All these things are hitting us, one after another. And it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. People are being forced out of their homes, out of the traditional way of life in Australia. Uh, the housing crisis, the manufactured housing crisis that we're seeing right now is making traditional three, four bedroom homes that would house a family become unaffordable for working class and lower lower um, income, lower socioeconomic Australians. I heard the other day that uh, to buy a house in the Melbourne suburb of Broadmeadows, that you would need a average income of $120,000 a year to afford those mortgage repayments with a 10% deposit. Families all around Melbourne are not able to keep the lights on that they are having their their electricity and their amenities cut for they can't afford everything all at once coming down upon them this is the destruction of the middle class this is the this is the contrived impoverishment of a nation it's always been a very affluent society 
in my lifetime that we had a middle class that this nation could boast about. But it is like a big pyramid scam going on in this country from the top down. They are imposing themselves upon the classes of the people with the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And we saw that during the pandemic. We saw billionaires become richer and richer and richer worldwide and the corporate takeover of the economy as small business went under never to recover. And the corporate fascists, the corporations took over everything. We've seen that with you don't see any hardware stores, little hardware stores anymore. It's just Bunnings. You don't see any grocery stores anymore. It's just Safeway. Many people were impoverished during that time and had their lives ruined. Probably countless, countless numbers would have committed suicide, but they keep those statistics from us. And when we look back at the pandemic, we can see how the, all this was done. A lot of it was done not because they were looking after our health, even though they had everybody looking for health and safety measures and things like that and coming to the government for protection. They wanted peace and safety. As it says in the Bible, that when you, you look for peace and safety, then cometh destruction, which is what happened. But anyway, so a lot of the things during the pandemic were about building this new world that we're going into now. And you can see that the Australian government has been, has been actually building towards this for years. In 2016, they released their Smart Cities plan. Now, why am I talking about Smart Cities when I was just talking about the pandemic? Well, a lot of the stuff that went on during the pandemic, the uh, localization of the people, social engineering us to accept staying within the confined borders of our homes, staying within a five kilometer radius. They have plans for this uh, in this country and it is in the smart cities plan of 2016 for 30 minute cities and 20 minute cities where everything which is within uh, 20 to 30 minute radius of your home uh, and you can get there like without using a car within that amount of time you should be able to get everything you need within that area so the localization was was uh, just a way the, the uh, keeping us within a certain amount so we didn't so we could stop the spread that was about social engineering us to accept the coming smart city 30 minute city 20 minute city and 15 minute city that they have planned for us they also had us buying only things that we needed yeah so it's like stay within your little area don't move out of it and just buy things locally from the local shop that was part of the smart city plan. Also, you've got the QR codes, yeah? The QR codes was a way of tracking you, getting used to being tracked everywhere you go, which is how it'll be in the smart city where you'll be taking a train everywhere and to get through the train station, you'll have to scan a QR code or something to that effect and you'll be tracked everywhere you go. They'll know your every movement. And if you put this, and it also says that we should be expecting digital identity bills to be passed by the end of this year, you couple that with the digital ID, they'll know exactly who's traveling where. In these smart cities as well, in these smart cities too, it's all going to be run by AI, it's, which, is, which is now here, and they're telling us we're going to lose our jobs because of AI. That the way people work and the jobs that people do like you can see with the actors strike or whatever over in Hollywood yeah that's just some uh, predictive programming you to accept is going to happen to you next that's why they're getting so much so much publicity for that so there'll be new jobs for the people all in a localized zone there will most likely be a universal wage as well and everybody will be tracked every dollar they spend will be tracked that's because the digital currency is going to be coming soon. And they can link that to your digital identification, which they're going to be bringing in. 
at the end of this year. To some extent of it, it will be in by the end of this year. They say that it's coming this year. The digital identity bill will be passed this year or put before parliament. And that threatens to track your every move on social media. Your ev- it tr- will track whether you're paying your taxes. It'll track your voting status, probably. Here we go. Yes, it's going to track your search history, social media interactions, online profiles, device location, medical records, financial ledgers, legal documents, every click, comment, and share you make on social media. Every financial transaction you record will go through your digital identification. Your local, your location and where you travel, what you buy and sell, your personal health data and medical records, the websites you visit, your participation in civic functions, voting, taxes, benefits, etc. How much energy you consume. And this will be linked through your bank account and stuff as well. This is basically social credit when you put all this together. They'll tell you, oh no, we don't have social credit in Australia. But yes, you will when you put all these things together. It's just like a puzzle and they're putting it together. Living in a smart city as well will have you uh, constantly under facial recognition CCTV cameras. Uh, that And this is what goes on in China. Yeah, everybody's tracked by facial recognition. That's coming here and they're already bringing it out during the pandemic and, and during that time, I'm pretty sure that was when Bunnings and Kmart started using it. Not like anyone steals anything from Kmart anyway. Not like anybody really would. There's no resale value for thieves there. But also, yeah, after the pandemic, uh, places like Victoria started coming out with something like their big build. Daniel Andrews has his big build. It's him trying to restart the economy after he destroyed it during COVID. And he spent $100 billion on rail projects and road projects. What's he doing there? He's building the rail system, yeah? So people can get around without cars. Uh, Part of the Smart Cities plan spoke about uh, what is going to come in the future technologically, how these big changes are going to revolutionize society and uh, things like driverless cars. That's something they've got planned, yeah? You'll be tracked through through this driverless cars thing. Yeah, so the cars on the road will be driverless. People will be shuttled around to their jobs, tracked, and uh, everything will be done by facial recognition so you won't be able to get away with a thing. You won't have any freedom in a smart city. They wanted everybody to get these boosters and stuff, yeah? They want to track whether you've taken the latest shot from the pharmaceutical fascists. They want to know whether you've complied, yeah? And it would just take another little pandemic type event for them to start this all up again. And if you haven't had it, you will not remember. They kept people out of shops. They kept people from work. They've got the system built. And they are imploding society and things like the housing crisis are a way of shuttling people who can't afford that type of living. They'll get them into commission flats. You notice that Albanese spent two, just put up $2 billion for commission housing, but he's done nothing about this rental crisis, yeah? When all he has to do is limit immigration. But he's serving his corporate masters once again. He doesn't care about the working class Australians that are struggling. He doesn't care about destroying the Australian dream or the Australian way of life. The Australian dream of owning a house and some land and raising a family. They don't care about families either. They do nothing for families. They don't care about them. The corporate world doesn't care about them because they've worked out that single people spend more money, they reckon. They want to keep you single. They want to keep you isolated. Families do things... For the future, families think about the future. Families uh, care about the future of children. These corporations do not. The, it's the, the family is an antithesis to the corporate new world order. These fascists want the future. They want to destroy your children. And they're building a system that they want you to sacrifice the future to build their system. They want you to sacrifice the jobs. 
they don't want your kids to have a future. They don't want the people of Australia to have a future. They figure the future is theirs and that they are building it and that there's no freedom in the future because through through freedom, we get our people power. Freedom br- brings political power. It brings you the... It brings you the option to say no. But when people are so compliant, as we saw during the pandemic, they feel they can get away with anything. But the thing is that they did overplay their hand during the pandemic, big time. I remember at the height of it, when they were bringing in the mandates, when they were locking everybody down, and people had been locked down in Victoria, for example, for over a year at that point. Anyway, Then everybody else got it. But at that point, they were actually at their weakest. When they came in to pull a swift right hook on the population of Australia, and they had the police out in force and everything, that was the point where we could have said no, no, no to everything. And it would have been a stalemate. But when people capitulated... They got power out of that, yeah? They, they get power out of your vote. They get power out of your compliance. All your, all your power, all your people power lies in your ability to say no. To say, to stand on your morals. To stand by your convictions. To protect your freedom by exercising your freedom and your free will that's given to you by God. You're right to say no to something. You're free to say no to anything. They can't force you to do anything. They can try to force your hand, yeah? And that's it. There was a lot of perceived... There was a lot of perceived power going on there. They, that Their perception that they could make you do something was what got them over the line with that. But at that moment when they were doing all that, they were actually at their weakest. Because all we had to do was keep saying no. Just like a bunch of protesters like uh, the Arab Spring or something, or, you know, people who just won't go home, yeah? Like that. If we just had have just stayed at it, they they would not have been able to do it because it's perceived power that they're exercising. We, We give them the power to exercise over us. At the end of the day, they're supposed to be serving the people. So if the people say no and stand by that and stand on their convictions, yeah? Do not capitulate to the perceived power that's coming out through the media. The illusion of power. Because it is an illusion. It's all witchcraft that they're doing through the media. They're playing mind games. It's psychological warfare. But they were weak in that moment. And that was a moment where we could have had major victory over the New World Order. But it's not over. Because what they did there, they overplayed their hand. They force vaccinated through mandates, through this perceived power, 95% of the nation, a big, big chunk of the worldwide population. Many of those people are angry. Many of those people are now seeking answers. And now they've got a spiritual awakening on their hands that they don't know how to handle. That the truth through the internet is proliferating at a rate they find it hard to contain. That uh, even with all the censorship that's going on out there, they can't contain it. I I saw with um they've got their distractions that they're playing. I I saw with the recent aliens uh distraction that they were running. That uh most people aren't willing to accept what was going on there. What they were tr- what they're trying to push. Most people were awake to the fact that they're trying to push this alien agenda onto people to possibly accept a fake alien invasion. And most people on the internet were wise to that. You've got the Christians who know what's going on. Even the UFO people knew what was going on. And there's awakenings happening in all these different groups. There's people out there searching the truth everywhere. And as Jesus said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It's a matrix of lies that they have built out there. And that is why the Australian government is now pushing these ridiculous misinformation laws where they're going to try to fine social media companies for not regulating content on the internet in Australia. Now, they'll probably get those through. But that is a reaction to 
try to thwart the coming spiritual awakening that's going on, the current spiritual awakening that's happening worldwide. The people are waking up after what they did to them and that they're panicking. And that's why you'll see them going hell for leather right across the, uh, right across the board. They try to keep, they're trying to keep their, their foot on the neck of the people because they fear the coming awakening. And that's why you'll see on the internet, all these people, all these celebrities now are trying to talk truth and have podcasts and say things. Yeah. Because they will be the ones that they want the public listening to because they know that there's a grounds roots movement of truthers out there all around the world and it's growing and growing and growing and they don't know what to do about it besides send out their minions who will gain thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands and if not millions of followers to try to stop the smaller channels like this one getting any traction and they shadow ban this channel so i implore you if you're listening to this broadcast to like my video to like this podcast, to subscribe to it, to, to uh, share it, and to spread it throughout the internet. Because there's not... There, I mean, they're out there. There's lots of us, yeah? But we need more in Australia. So give Truth Core some love. And uh, that's what it's going to take to overcome the hate of the New World Order as well, is we're going to have to love. We're going to have to get over the division, the pointless division that the New World Order and the media has been spreading and as I said in my last podcast people have lost they've lost faith in the media they've lost faith in the government and this is the biggest the biggest uh, point where they know that they're losing so we need to seek the truth as Jesus as Jesus would want us to do and this is a war of God against a God against the satanic powers of be they're going to have to pull World War Three to get out of the current spiritual awakening. And if they pull World War Three, which it looks like they're going to do eventually, then they'll be able to shut down the internet. Then they'll be able to pull in a lot of stuff like martial law. They'll come up with another contrived crisis very shortly. We know that for a fact. Because yes, they're losing. They've lost the hearts and minds for the people after what they did. In 2020, 2021, and 2022. Here we are in 2023. Digital ID is coming. They're coming for the truth. They're coming for gun owners in Australia. They're trying to build a police state. What do you think the William Biller event was all about? As soon as that happened, they came in with gun controls. As soon as that happened... They were blaming so-called conspiracy theorists, truth seekers, and then Christians, calling it a Christian terrorist attack. What a joke. They're aware that most Australians, there's been uh, studies done on the Port Arthur Massacre that like 70% of people in Australia think something was up with that. So they're aware of it, but they're going ahead with their plans. It's a police state that they're building here. And this smart cities plan is part of it. And when you see the housing crisis, the destruction of the middle class and all these things, this is all part of it. The pandemic was all part of it. It's all part of the police state. They put the pandemic to destroy the economy, to socially engineer you, to accept tyranny and a police state, police state measures to get used to martial law, to get used to not traveling. They've got the climate change stuff going on. The, digi the digital ID and the digital currency will merge with the facial recognition of the smart cities and everything and all these vaccine passport type measures. The fascists will pull their police state. They want you to accept it. Do not accept it. The only way to freedom is to seek the truth. You need to be at one with the truth as well. You need to get to know the truth. Because the truth is alive. The truth has always been alive and is everlasting. This was Truth Core. I hope you enjoyed it. Speak the truth and seek the truth. And as always, peace out and praise God.